We pulled out of Fort Myers Beach last Saturday around 3 p.m. As we got into the Gulf, I pointed into the wind as Thomas pulled the sails out. We were expecting a northeast wind, but of course we ended up with a westerly wind. But all was well and we settled in for the 19-ish hour sail to Key West. Everything was going smoothly as we watched another beautiful sunset, and I even got a FaceTime call from all my kids that had gotten together for dinner that night. That is, until the sun went down. As an easterly wind started building, the waves did too. Winds kicked up to 20 knots and the waves cranked up to 6 to 7 foot swells that hit us on our port side beam, throwing our starboard rails into the water, repeatedly. We pulled on our head sail and reefed our mainsail to help with balance, but the swells just kept coming, and since it was dark, we couldn't see them. This continued all through the night and into the morning, a total of 13 and a half hours when all was said and done. At least as we gained daylight, we could see the waves coming and prepare for them. And we had a few dolphin friends soon by for a visit. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Mr. Bitterman, our autopilot is still acting up since the last one we were in, so we had to hand steer this entire time. And by we, I mean Thomas, because for the first time I was seasick. I would take the helm long enough to give him a break, but he definitely took the brunt end of this cell. As I was trying to film the dolphins playing, I also caught one of the swells that pushed our rails into the water. Oh no. As we were about 16 miles from Key West, the swells started to recede and finally we were able to relax a little. Well, other than trying to dodge all the minefield of crab pods out there. Almost exactly 24 hours from pulling out of Fort Myers Beach, we were dropping anchor. We were whooped, starving, and ready for bed. The mess left down below would just have to wait until tomorrow.